So, so season one ends, and you're renewed. What is the next day? It airs. What is the next day for you? After, after being renewed? After, after, it, after the season one finale airing. What's the next do? day? What did you do? I think I really drank all day. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure there have been days of just drinking all day. Um, I don't know, like champagne. I think there's been a lot of champagne. Uh, we have just had like an unbelievable ride, honestly. I think that there's been a lot of, I mean, I there's been a lot of like, rrr, rrr, and I actually said out loud one time, which is so corny. I can't believe I said it, but when the New Yorker review came out, I said out loud, pinch me. I was like, <laughs> pinch me, pinch me, which is like a cartoon character thing to say. But it really has felt like the reception has been unbelievable. Like, with all these lists coming out at the end of the year and the AFI Awards and the Critics' Choice, there really is just a feeling of, like, I cannot fucking believe this is happening. It feels like a bad sequence in a movie. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like... This is where they kill me. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, (laughs) I'm like, I had a dream and I came to Hollywood and I sold my short. And then it's like, and we made this beautiful show that's, like, more than I ever could have expected it to be. I have, like, my dream cast and we're getting recognized for what we did. And I think for me the most gratifying part is that, you know, the cast... And, and the network, everyone took such a huge leap of faith on me to do this. And it was sort of like trusting, you know, lifetime trusting that I could pull it off or that my vision was strong enough to, to make a show out of the um, Shiri and Constance believing that this uh, lifetime project was going to be like something that they really wanted to be a part of. And everybody just getting on board and going hard and getting recognized for their work is like the best I could have ever hoped for. So are you committing to the premise that you stated way like like a couple of years ago which was the cast yeah. was gonna basically you know reinvent every season minus maybe uh co- maybe Constance and Shiri like, yeah 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 so what was so funny when I pitched the show um initially it was like there was this light bulb that went off in the room and Nina Lederman who's the person I pitched the show to was like oh my god this is amazing like we can just renew the cast every season I was like yeah isn't that amazing isn't that great and now that I actually have to write it I'm like oh my god what did I do this is so much work So it's like we're really kind of creating a new show every season. But the thing is that it's not only Shiri and Constance who are Rachel and Quinn. It's also Chet and Jay Mm -hmm. and Dr. Wagerstein. So we have a scaffolding of like... So the crew of the show... Totally. ...is going to keep going. And Jeremy. Yeah. And so all of these like... And what I always knew, like even from the very beginning when I pitched the show, I never pitched it as a behind-the-scenes look at The Bachelor. I pitched it as a feminist um, gets stuck working on a show like The Bachelor and has basically a nervous breakdown. Mm -hmm. And so I always pitched it as a character drama, and I always knew that our point of view was going to be through Rachel and Quinn. Mm -hmm. And so having that scaffolding and that be the real directive makes recasting around them a lot easier than it would sound. Because we're sort of like, we actually are just picking up with Rachel and Quinn where they left off and following them through the season, and then everything else sort of blooms around them. When we rejoined Uh Rachel and Quinn, how much time has passed between... I think between seven months. It's about seven months, yeah. So what's happened in that seven months that you can tease? Um, I can tease that they... Let's see, what can I say? They have gotten to the place where they are no longer going to be dominated by Chet, and they're basically at war with manhood. Like, they are on top... They're obsessed with power and money, and they're, like, you know, dancing on the tables, doing coke, and having a great time. Where do you view Rachel in this process? Because when she starts, she's very, she hates the the work she does. She's really good at it, but she hates it. She hates the show. Yeah. It gets to the end of the season, she's like, I'm going to turn this into, like, my success story. I'm mm-hmm. going to turn this into, you know, my advantage. So in season two... What's her outlook of the show? Does she still hate the show? Does she still hate the product that she's producing? In season two, when we come back to Rachel, um, she's all in. And she's decided she's trapped in this world, and if she's trapped in it, she's going to conquer it. And so she is hell-bent on winning and becoming Quinn and becoming the boss and just like winning at life in this world because she doesn't really think there's any other option. What are Quinn's goals? Quinn's, Quinn's goals are to become Chet. And what happens, where, where is Chet at right now? Because he knows he's going to war. Yeah. So where is he at? Chet's gathering his strength in a faraway place, and he will return. So he's not in the premiere? He is in the premiere. He is in the premiere? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, he, he's out for blood, though. But, and because he was dethroned at the end of last season. Right. He was humiliated in front of the network. He was shown up, and he was dethroned, and he was sort of castrated. And so he is off gathering his male strength and he will return are you going to be ringing a lot of similar bells with the new cast that comes in because you we see a lot of like the manipulation and all the like you know go after this girl's uh bulimia go after this one's mental instability 
and so on. Are are those the kind of bells we're going to ring in season two, or are there going to be new ways we manipulate the girls? There's all new ways we manipulate the girls. And what's really interesting for us, and what I always really encourage in the writer's room, is that we make sure that the contestants on the show um, are players and that they have a plan because that just keeps the whole game alive. And so I think what we're going to see a little bit more in season two is that these girls who come onto the show are savvy, and they're out manipulating Rachel and Quinn. And what's your goal with The Bachelor, The Suitor, this season? I think our goal with The Suitor this season is to really explore a different kind of manhood and actually, again, as we are with the contestants, make him a real player in the game. He's got a real point of view. He's savvy. He's got his own agenda, and it's kind of like Quinn and Rachel have met their match. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, with that, is that, is, and what's with, where is Rachel at in her personal life? This year, she's got, I can't imagine she'd be ringing the bell going after the suitor again. Right, right. Because that didn't work out so well. Yeah, no, no, no. (laughs) Rachel as, again, so Rachel and Quinn are on the path of, like, they're unstoppable, they're untouchable, they're going to behave and battle like men. So she is very much about, like, dick, that's it. Mm -hmm. And is there, do you, are you worried, because, like, when you say something like that, it also gives this notion that women battle differently than men. Like, is that is that something you're going to explore? Like, do women and men battle differently the way they go after things? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, our whole season is really about gender roles. Mm-hmm. And it's sort of about Quinn and Rachel trying to step into these male gender roles. Qu- Chet coming back, like, determined to take his castle back. Them worrying how that, like, what the effect is on women when they try and battle that way. And I do believe, you know, in it, as a huge generalization that men and women do battle sort of differently. And again, there's all spectrums on the gender spectrum. Mm-hmm. But that I think um, what we're really, really interested in talking about is the impact of that kind of career on a woman's life. And what, for you, is that impact? Because you also lived it. Yeah. You for how many years? Um, I actually was only there for three years, but I did nine seasons in three years. Okay. Because they just shoot them back to back. So. Oh, really? Yeah. So I was like living at work and sleeping under my desk. And, so how many you know. stories do you have that you haven't put into the show yet? Um, you know, actually none of the stories are from my life. I'm oh, just really? a writer. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's kind of the funny thing for me is like, I went to Sarah Lawrence for writing. I'm a writer. I am a television writer. And so I'm not really about like pulling stories from stuff that actually happened to me. I'm definitely into tapping into what was happening for me emotionally at that time. And some of the conflicts, but, like, plot-wise, there's nothing. Have you gotten any calls from anyone who you worked with on the show? Only, like, oh, my God, that's amazing. I miss you. I mean, it's been really sweet. A lot of people are sort of, like, you know, they like it. They're entertained by it. I think they're impressed by how writerly it is. Like, it really – and, again, that it's not not stories from our life. It's Mm -hmm. just, like, pure fiction. Um, And then I think there's a lot of, like – they like that their world is being depicted and that the work's being taken seriously. Because a lot of people who make reality TV just feel like everyone thinks that they don't really like write or create or have any input. And they sort of like that that's being represented. Are you ever getting to worry to... Like, Quinn can be as unlikable as she wants. Yeah. And it doesn't really matter for us. But we still... Do you feel like we have to like Rachel or we have to understand Rachel? Like, where do you view our the audience's relationship to Rachel? Yeah. So likability is a word we threw out day one. We just don't even talk about it. Um, We feel like relatability is more important. So I think that um, anyone who's ever had a job or compromised, like for a job or kind of sold their soul for a job as they're trying to survive can relate to what Rachel's doing. So the most important thing for us is actually just keeping her grounded and keeping her decisions motivated because most people who've, again, had to like compromise for jobs can relate to that. Where is Rachel mentally? season not great not super stable <laughs> no no how how bad how unstable because she was she like, yeah we, we see we always get those teases of where she was before yeah she enters in the beginning of the pilot mm-hmm. and so we see her at the end of season one and she's like kind of come down and yeah she has a vision of what she wants when we do we join her in season two you know how like how unstable is she going to get? Is it, is it really going to go down the rabbit hole this year? Yeah, so um, Rachel's mental health is actually something we talk about a lot. Like, as we're breaking a new episode, before we start, we sort of say, okay, let's check in. Like, where is Rachel romantically? Where is she professionally? And where is she on the mental health scale? And we actually have, like, a chart of Rachel's mental health. Mm-hmm. And I'll just tell you, it goes like, ugh! <laughs> what, about the, what about the mental health of the rest of the characters? And does her mental health yeah. um, affect everyone around her? Yes, Rachel's mental health affects everyone around her all the time because she's so convincing that people sort of believe whatever crazy trip she's on. And so if she's manic, then everyone's manic. And if she's depressed, everyone's depressed. And so she sort of, like, swings everybody with her. On, and it's kind of like following, like, a drunk pirate ship. Like, she's just, you know. But I think, again, we keep her grounded and motivated. So that mental health stuff is not 
it's not just chemical. It's a reaction to what's happening. There was... So last last season you threw the you threw the kitchen sink at everything to the point where someone jumps off a roof yeah. and commits suicide. Yeah. And you end it with this manipulation where there's a fake suicide note, so the daughter, you know, lives somewhat happily, which is, you know, I don't know how true that can really how true that can yeah. really be, but are you going to go that far in season two? Do you feel a little safer to like not have to like dull things out a little more? Is it gonna be as much of a crazy train? In season two. <clears throat> yeah, I think one thing that's been really important for me about this show was exploring what it means to be edgy. And for me to be edgy, it's not about pushing plot. It's about pushing it's about shocking people with the truth. And like really having characters that are so believable that you're invested and you're shocked when things happen. So I think that in season two, we stay really, really grounded. And it's not about outdoing ourselves with like another suicide or a murder. Like that's not what we're interested in. We're just actually interested in staying inside of our characters and letting them go really far personally. So it's more about like it's more about from Rachel's point of view, like what's the thing you think Rachel wouldn't do? She's probably gonna do it. How much battling is there going to be between the contestants this year? Shit tons. <laughs> <laughs> how how, yeah. how how far do they take it? As much as you can tease. Yeah, sure. The contestants this year are off the ch- off the chain. Like, I mean, like I said, we really have made them players in the game. They have an agenda. They have a point of view. And they're manipulating the producers almost as much as the producers are manipulating them. And they're at war with each other. Do the producers... Like, it almost felt like in season one, the girls knew they were being manipulated, but they didn't necessarily care. They didn't fight back. They didn't fight back. Will these contestants be fighting back against the manipulation this year? Yeah, the contestants in season two are going to be fighting back against the manipulation. And what will the... How will the producers be handling that? And um, the producers are going to, in season two, the producers are going to struggle to maintain these really fiery and sort of smart strategic contestants. And I think it's going to be all out war. Like, I don't think that, I think it's going to be every, at every turn, it's going to be up, down, up, down, because you're sort of at constant battle. So is Quinn, so at the beginning of season one, we see Quinn has this whole map of like how she expects yes. season one to play out. And then all, her star character is eliminated and per Rachel per Rachel's manipulation yeah. is eliminated in the first episode. Yeah. And throws out her entire plan. Does she even have a plan for season for this for this season of the show? And does that also get thrown out the window? Yeah, so what happens in season two is that Quinn does have a plan for the season, but actually in the in the season premiere, um, that plan gets kind of shook. And so they have to quickly readjust and fill some holes. And so they kind of come in with a crazy deck of cards, but they don't really know how to arrange them. Okay. My last question for you then uh-huh. is where do you want to take the show? By the end of season two, where do you want to be with the show? I'm trying to think how I can answer that without spoiling it. I could just give Emotionally, me a Emotionally, where do you want to be? Let's go with that. Um, okay. So in season two, we're going to further explore the concept of the work family. So it's like we start with our family who are Quinn, Rachel, and Chet at odds. So it's mom, dad, and daughter at odds. And by the end of the season, we really want to prove that the only family you have is work. 